Okay, y'all, I'm working this video backwards today. The kids were here on it. They were ready to do, uh, you know how children are, and I wanted to let them go ahead and get their thing done. They wanted to do a cake today, so I went ahead and let them get their cake out of the way. So now, uh, I'm counting behind today, so I'm going to be rushing. If I seem like I'm rushing, I'm not rushing you. I'm trying to play catch up. I'm getting this meal uh, on the table. So today I'm doing some curry. This is curry chicken. Of course, these are drum sticks, my favorite is part of the chicken. Um, I am grabbing a couple of pans. So, what I'm going to do, what I've started doing already, y'all know I marinate my meat usually overnight, and that's why it's no different than this. I marinate these with uh, some of my masala or uh, curry sauce overnight and now I'm just pan frying them a little bit to get them pretty and brown and what I'm getting ready to do now is I'm going to get my veggies in the same pan for a minute to keep this part pan just a little bit and then we're going to get this uh, cur these curried up chicken drumsticks in the oven so they should be good and seasoned up like I said I use that masala um, seasoning that uh, is the authentic Indian curry seasoning. Y'all know I get so excited about when I get to use that. Uh, that is from my girl uh, Khadija and Fatima. I have to give credit. Y'all know me. I like to give credit where credit is due. So that's, I'm, I use that. Uh, there's the season that they sent me. I use to season my chicken with. So now I'm going to go ahead and drop these uh, peppers and onions and celery into the same skillet where I did the uh, chicken. And I'm just going to let them saute maybe about five, about ten minutes. Like I said, I don't have a lot of time. I'm going to go ahead and get that bottom off of there. I've got about a fourth a cup of uh, olive oil in this pan. I'm going to scrape that up a little bit. Leave it right in there, but I don't want it to re-stick, so that got my heat up on high okay I'm also going to do some barbecue chicken sauce so everybody don't like curry so, you know sometimes curry can be a little bit too spicy I like mine spicy but not too spicy but some folks don't like spicy at all so I've got these going I'm going to put a little bit of margarine in there You know, we can use the smart start margarine, y'all. So we're just going to let these go ahead and saute. And while those are sauteed, I'm going to go on the other side of the room because I'm going to do my chicken, uh, my barbecue chicken drum. I'm going to put them in my ninja foodie and let them cook. So hold on and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I'm going to get me a little gravy going for my, um, let's go ahead and put a little flour water in there. And we're going to get a little gravy going so to speak, for this curry. This is curry my style, so, you know, anybody that, you know, makes curry or experts at it, I'm, I'm sure you can, woo, you have seen it done like this. Take notes. I'm always telling y'all, it's chef's choice. When, when I get here in my kitchen, chef's choice, y'all. Trust me, gonna make a little bit of gravy, not a lot. Get that green. I've got some green curry paste. Now, I'm only going to maybe put a little bit in there because you know why? Green curry paste is hot. I don't want to get it too hot, but honey, it has all the flavor in the world in it. So I'm just going to put maybe a half a teaspoon in there to get me going. Is that okay? Half a teaspoon? Mm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I can feel the heat already. And this is a, a half a teaspoon of uh, garlic sea salt that I'm putting in there. And I'm going to put in a little bit of uh, the Goya. I'm going to have to pour a little bit more water in here too because it's kind of thick in there. Doing just what I wanted to do because I didn't, didn't pour it over the chicken so I can get the chicken in the oven, y'all. I'm sort of rolling fast here right long now. I need this food in the oven.
Okay, a good fourth of a cup of raisins is what I went over there to get for it now. I think that's the children's cake. Okay. We got that going. I'm going to put about another fourth of a cup of water. Thick, but not too thick, and I don't even need a lot. Hey, don't need a lot. Yummy, gravy's banging. Mm, good job. Ooh, it's kicking too. Do that because I need to put a little bit more. Water. I was about to say, I'm always considered when I'm a considerate cook, as y'all know. That that was a, had a little bit of heat to it, so I thin it out just a little bit more, so everybody that wants to eat it can eat it. Put it like that. Okay. So a little bit of seasoned salt. About an eighth of a teaspoon of seasoned salt, y'all. And y'all know I'm going to put a little bit of turmeric in there. This is my little turmeric bag, y'all. A little bit of turmeric. And I'm curry powder, that is. We've got lots of curry. we got that masala seasoning in there. We put a lot of raisins in there because we don't want too many going on. gonna be some good eating y'all that chicken is maybe a fourth of the way done but we're gonna put it in with a little bit more salt going on all right children I heard that our oven go off so that should be enough and now what we're gonna do is get this uh, <coughs> curry ready to go into the oven that right on top there. Hang on just a minute. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, I know y'all hear it sizzling. Now, oh, this cake is good. I heard that. Y'all's cake oh, went off about two or three minutes ago. Let's see. Ooh, it's, it's testing soft in the middle, we're going to let it soft? It's yeah. not supposed to be soft in the middle? Yeah, but it's not supposed to sink. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to rise. Rise, right. It's supposed to rise. Yeah. Their cake needs to cook a little bit longer, y'all. Leave that front door over for me. Let's sell some air. We get some air. Let's pop it in there. Okay. Oh, I need to get this. You know what? As soon as you put small pans in the oven, they get real hot. So, what I'm doing over here in the oven now is get my foil on the pan. And that cake needs to finish cooking. So, we're going to put that cake back in for a few more minutes. Now, our chicken is in the oven y'all so it's going to cook for about an hour and a half and it'll be ready so we're going to go over here on the other side and get this barbecue chicken going okay in goes the chicken legs for our barbecue chicken i'm just going to pour them right in there i think i've got this i'm going to pour all of my um bar i got my barbecue sauce in there got my um chicken in there and of course i have seasoned it overnight so it's been seasoned with the barbecue sauce and all of the other same seasons as my other chicken. The garlic powder, onion powder, uh, a little bit of salt, pepper, a little bit of lemon pepper. These are going to be um, barbecue chicken drumsticks. Let's get that off the side of it. I don't want that to stick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start these off in the on the crisper cycle. And I'm going to put them on for about 30 minutes. And then after that, I'll open it up and look at it and flip them over a little bit and let them cook 
Then the last 10, 15 minutes, I'm gonna put it on the pressure cooking cycle. That will ensure that they are good and done all the way through to the bottom. So here we go. This is my Ninja Foodie. Got it all ready to turn on. Let's see, we can turn it on. And I said, uh, there's a cycle called the air crisp cycle. Get it on that air crisp cycle. Y'all have seen this so, so many times. And I think a few of y'all have gone ahead and invested. So on air crisp, want that temperature, it starts out at 400. And then we're going to put the timer on it. I think I'm going to put, uh, let's put 35 minutes on there. And we're going to go on ahead to start and let it start cooking. Now, when it goes through that cycle, I'm going to look at it. And if it looks pretty crisp up on, on, well, I'll lift it up and look at it in 15 minutes because it's going to start browning and so on like that. So if it's round enough, I'll flip it and then we'll put about 10 minutes of pressure on it. So it all together about 40 minutes for it to cook. So we'll be right back to finish that up. And the other thing that I've got to cook today, I think I'm going to do my version of uh, the Mexican street corn and some pre potatoes and cabbage. So we'll be back. Okay, y'all, we're going to make some Mexican street corn, and I want to make it, I guess, from scratch, because I'm going to use some frozen corn. I'm just going to steam it, and then I'm going to get it cooled back down, and we're going to season it up. And this should be really extra good. This is supposed to be the super sweet kind. Okay. So all you have to do is just, I put some butter and some water on it, let it boil. I'm gonna let it steam for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna let it cool back down. And then I'm gonna season it up. It's gonna be my style. I'm gonna be putting some um, bell pepper, Sarah onion, chopped it real fine in there. Put a little bit of uh, cheese in there, some mayo and some sour cream and some uh, Greek yogurt. And we're gonna see what it tastes like. So we'll be right back. Hey y'all, the cake is ready. My uh, pastry chefs, have done such a great job. Y'all got anything you want to say about this cake? You nope. can show this in the middle. Oh, can we eat some? Yeah. Hmm. Do a thumbnail. Yeah, well, you got this is all on. Okay. Y'all, I'm going to let y'all. show this in the mirror. Okay. Yeah. They directed me on how to film, so. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so anyway, they got the dessert ready for the day. Thank y'all so much. You're welcome. Okay, y'all, we're at the end of the dishes that's going to be served today. This is my version of a Mexican street corn. I've got a bowl of my own corn. It was frozen. I just steamed it for about 10 minutes. There's bell pepper, onion, and celery chopped up in it. I'm going to put about, because I'm not sure about, for this is a pound of corn, so I'm not really sure about how much. So I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons of sour cream. And I'm gonna put a couple of tablespoons of mayo, because as I recall, it didn't have that much in it, but enough. And I'm just gonna take and stir it up. And I think you can pretty much tell by how it looks. Yeah, I think it's gonna be plenty. And then on top of that, I'm gonna put. I didn't have any fresh cheese, but I've got some um, Parmesan cheese that I'm gonna put in here. A couple of tablespoons of that. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Uh, oh, yeah. That's a lot of corn because normally I just use a can of one or two cans. So, who it smells good. Wonderful, wonderful. And we got us some um, Mexican street corn, my style. And I know there's some experts at this out there, but this is what I can remember was in there. And I didn't go to YouTube to get a recipe. This is from memory. So, got our Mexican street corn, got my cabbage on over there. That's about it. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this. I left it in the drainer because I didn't want a lot of juice in it, so I left it in the strainer. So now we got it into the bowl. It can cool down because as I recall when we purchased it in California they even put uh, some melted butter on it seemed like to me. So can you see it can you? There it is. 
and I think uh, the flavors have to uh, sort of go through each other. So basically, that's it. And th this recipe is all over YouTube, and some of you might already know how to do it, but I just decided I wanted to do it today for dinner. So that's my version of Mexican street corn. Get it for me. Hey y'all got the cabbage over here. Uh, this is like uh, three pounds of cabbage. Turkey bacon. Fourth of a cup of brown sugar. And about a couple of tablespoons of uh, vinegar. Just to give it that little, kind of a little pizzazz to that. Then I'm going to do some cream potatoes out the box. Quiet on set for a minute. Let me finish this last part off. Okay, y'all, we're done. Cream potatoes, cornbread, cabbage. Hey, y'all, just came back to say toodles to you. My video cut off right before I got to say my last words. I didn't get a chance to say keep those prayers going up so the blessings can continue to come down. Continue to consider reconciliation, love on one another, find you something good to cook to eat, uh, go research some um, black issue facts and come back and share them with us. Thank y'all so, 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 so much for sticking in and hanging in here with me and listening to me and cooking with me and sharing whatever black history facts that you may have. So listen, y'all, most of all, pray without ceasing for all the many things that's going on in each other's lives and in the things that's going on around the country. Again, keep those prayers going up now so the blessings will continue to come down. So until my next Black History Fact or until my next meal that I cook, to Lou, love you guys.